So we'll look at this example. This is some SAS output, and you'll see that the table of these numbers of animals who were cured or not cured on each of the treatments in the SAS output, it's repeating those numbers, although it's ran the other way, no, it's coming before yes, for not cured and cured. And so the way the chi-squared test works is it, first of all, predicts the number of animals it would expect to be cured under the null hypothesis. So if all the groups were the same, it is predicting that 20 out of the 32 animals, or 20.333 of the 32 animals, should be cured, and that's what you would expect under the null hypothesis. And for group A, then, that's approximately what happens. But group B, it's differing from um, what you would expect. There's fewer animals cured. And for group C, there's actually more animals cured than you might expect. But is that just by chance, or is there something going on there? Is, is the cure rate higher on group in group C? And that's what the chi-squared test evaluates. In the same way, it comes up with a test statistic, and which uh, is called the chi-squared statistic. Here it takes a value of 8, and it compares it against a distribution. But basically, the chi-squared statistic has a distribution, and at higher values are going to lead to smaller p-values. And our value of 8 happens to give this prob in the SAS output is actually the p-value for the chi-squared test, and it's about 0.02, and it's significant. Just like the t-test and the f-test, the chi-squared test, if you're interested in knowing it has a degrees of freedom, which is used to define the correct chi-squared distribution to test the null hypothesis, and the degrees of freedom is going to be related to the number of groups you're comparing. So we're comparing three groups here. It's the number of rows in the table, minus 1, multiplied by the number of columns, minus 1. So here we've got three rows, and two columns, so it's going to be 3 minus 1 multiplied by 1. And I've done that in red because there's actually an error in the slides that you printed out. That should be 3 minus 1 multiplied by 1. I think the times 1 got missed out somehow. We've got a significant p-value. We've, we've proved that there's a difference between the three groups in terms of the cure rate. And if we did a Fisher's exact test, that works a bit differently. I won't go into the details, but it looks at every possible combination under the null hypothesis of this, these tables of frequencies and comes up with an exact p-value. In this case, it's very close to the chi-squared p-value. I said the chi-squared test is, is suitable for larger data sets. And the rule of thumb that people tend to use is they want at least a quarter of these expected numbers to be no more than a quarter to be less than five. And in our case, our data set is large enough, and we find that all these expected numbers are greater than five. So we've got confidence that the chi-squared test is suitable. The Fisher's exact test isn't wrong, it's just either tests are, are suitable and we've got a bit of reassurance that the p-values are very similar, both showing significance. So we've shown that overall there's a difference between the three groups of treatments. Of course, just as we wanted to for a continuous data, you want to know which pairs of treatments are different. And there's not a special test for this. We can simply do a chi-squared test just taking the two groups that we want to compare. So if we wanted to look at A, compared to B, we just do a chi-squared test based on the treatments A and B, and that in fact comes up with a non-significant chi-squared test p-value and a non-significant Fisher's exact test p-value. So we've got no evidence that even though there are more animals cured on treatment A than B, that's not statistically significant. We haven't got enough data or power to show that. And here, the degrees of freedom is now going to be basically 2 minus 1, 1 multiplied by 1, and we only have w 1 degree of freedom for the test. But don't worry too much about thinking about degrees of freedom, unless you want to do the test by hand, which you probably wouldn't do. And these are the other p-values for each of the pairs of comparisons between the treatments, and only one was significant. So we were only able to demonstrate that um, treatment B had a significantly lower cure rate than treatment C. So they were the most extreme rates in the data set and had a significant p-value. 
And having said I'd always put NS here, you probably would have been better if this is just for so you can see what the actual p-values were. But if I was reporting that, I would put ns for these non-significant p-values. For unordered categorical data, you can use the chi-squared test in just the same way. So this would be an example of unordered data. Blood group probably doesn't follow a particular ordering. We would just use a chi-squared test on those frequencies to see if the proportion of diseased animals was higher on any particular blood group. That's the chi-squared test results with the expected numbers under the null hypothesis and we get a significant test statistic. But unlike before where we didn't get a warning, we now get a warning that 25% of the cells have got expected counts of less than five. Chi-squared may not be a valid test. So it's a bit worried about the low values of these expected values. You don't want more than 25% to be less than 5, and it's picked that up here. So that's uh, a strong hint that you should try, perhaps, to do a different test, well, to use basically the Fisher's exact test, which will give you an exact p-value. And that also comes out as significant, so it gives us sort of reassurance. I think it's only coincidental. It's the same as the chi-squared, almost the same as the chi-squared test. So from that, we can, assume, we can conclude that the blood groups differ significantly between the diseased and the healthy animals.